bright beauty every student matters hello everyone let's start our second topic of chapter number 2 that is the nationalist movement in indo china and the topic's name is french colonial domination of indo china now students before this we had a brief introduction of indo china we saw that it comprises of the regions like laos cambodia and vietnam the modern day regions right and we also saw how these regions they had to fight for their independence for over 30 years against the colonial domination also the main religion that was followed here is theravada buddhism or the hinayan buddhism right it is theravada and hinayan buddhism okay moving on now in this part students as the topic suggests we are going to talk about the french colonial domination now if you remember you have learnt about colonization all the colonial rule and i gave the example of the colonial rule that was there in india right the british colonial rule here also in indo china we see that the european powers they came here to establish their colony right to have the political domination and also to make a lot and lot of profits from these regions so here we are going to understand how the french they were successful in establishing a colonial rule in indo china in early 18th uh, 17th century now when we are talking about the timeline here for 17th century it means from 1601 to 1700 somewhere around between this period now when we are talking about the early 17th century it means in the early 1600s or before 1650s right so the french priests they arrived in this region as a part of portuguese jesuit mission now if you remember in class 8 you already have learnt about british rule right bits of information you have gathered from these chapters that you learned in class 8 but here you will find that when we are talking about the european powers so around 1600 we see that they were fighting in order to establish colony everywhere wherever they found that the region is not that capable of resisting their rule so they established a colony there so here also we see that in indo china the european powers they were coming to establish their rule so it was in the early 17th century that the french priests they came here in this region as a part of jesuit mission now this is a new term for you that is jesuit mission here the term that is jesuit it means society of jesus so basically it is a religious community and in this community people who are in this community they are the followers of jesus so basically they are the christian missionaries now they had their own ideologies and they wanted to spread the idea of christianity everywhere so it was for this purpose that they came in this region as a part of this mission now vietnamese in the beginning they wanted to resist the foreign interest religion and commerce now when all these people who are living in the region of indo china so here the vietnamese people belonging to the region vietnam they wanted to resist this foreign rule they wanted to resist this foreign power and also the foreign interest their religion and commerce so the basic idea was to extract maximum profit from these regions but was it successful there let us understand now now it was in the year 1858 that finally the french so the french power they landed in indo china also in the early 1880s 
there was a war against china in which french occupied cochin china tonkin and anam region here let us have this uh, uh, let us have a look at this map so what are we talking about we are talking about the war that took place between french people or the french power and the chinese and in this power the french they occupied these three regions let us see where are they in this map so this is the region of cochin china this is the region of tonkin and this is the region of anam so these three regions they were occupied by whom they were occupied by french people also in 1887 french indo china was born so combining all this region we see that in 1887 finally they were successful in establishing the french indo china region now we also find that during this period there were four protectorates you will find that term in your book of french indo china now what does this term mean protectorates it means a region that is being protected by protected by another region so the four pro protectorates were laos cambodia tonkin and anam so in indo china here french indo china we see that there were four protectorates okay the powerful regions here now let us try to understand what were the motives of french in colonialism basically why were they wanting to come and establish their colonies in indo china region so if you remember when we are talking about your previous classes where you have learned about british rule in india there we saw that there were so many motives of the british who wanted to establish their colony in india but foremost was trade likewise here also we see that the european powers in general they were establishing colonies in different areas so the main idea was to have trade relations to extract a lot of materials from there and also to take it back to their areas to extract a lot a lot of profits right so the first motive here is that colonies provided raw materials cheap labor and search for market here also we see that the french motive was to get more and more raw materials at a cheaper rate also cheap labor now here the labor was really cheap for the french people so they can make a lot and lot of goods and they could take back and sell it at a higher rate right so basically to gain profit and also to search for markets for cheap markets in these regions they also fulfilled the desire for glory prestige and man power yes students now when we are talking about the european powers it involves a lot of regions be it the british empire be it the french be it the dutch portuguese and so on now they were also fighting among themselves to establish their domination in different regions right so the british people they are fighting with the french the portuguese the dutch and so on so here they established colonies to show that they were powerful they were dominating and to get glory prestige and also to show their manpower obviously right it also helped in implanting roman catholicism and french culture in colonies so here we see that economy then to show that they were powerful and also if we talk about religion so these are some of the main aspects or the motives let's say 
for the French to establish colonies in Indochina region that they wanted to spread French culture in all these regions. Now the colonies also had to serve the interests of mother country. Yes students. Now after all they are establishing colonies in different areas to get profits. Now emphasizing on this term profit again and again because that was the main motive to extract a lot that uh, to extract any amount of money that they can from these regions right the raw materials or the money after selling their goods and so on so here end of the day the profit was going to their own mother country and therefore the colonies they were acquired with the sole purpose of making profits economy of the colonies were to be developed as well yes students now if they are getting profit definitely they are going to increase the economy of their own country to develop the economy of their own country and that is why they were establishing colonies everywhere now in this image you can see there is a french person who is looking at the land or site c in this region of vietnam now how is french developing the economy of its colony in indo china now wherever they have established their colonies how were they going to develop the economy there and gain more and more profit about which we have learned just now so they started building canals drained lands in the mekong delta to increase cultivation quite important here so here what they did they started increasing cultivation in these regions why because they could grow more and more crops there and also these items could be exported in different regions and the profit would come to whom to these french people and they were trying to increase the economy of their own country right so here we see that indirectly it was helping the french people only now what system of irrigation works it increased the rice production and export of rice like i said right now so the irrigation work why because here we find that there was cheap labor that also helped in getting more and more people right at cheap rates and also this increased the rice production and export of rice in different areas now by 1931 vietnam exported two thirds of rice production and became the third largest exporter of rice now these people here we see that they started increasing the rice cultivation and what was the main reason behind it to become the largest the third largest exporter of rice and here you see that might be they are doing this in these colonies but the profit that was coming was in the hands of the french people also to help rice cultivation infrastructure in transport was improved now imagine during that period when we are talking about 17th 18th 19th centuries the infrastructure was not so developed like it is today now we have various types of transports in today's era but that during that period we did not have so so they started to build railway line because these railway lines were for their own profit how it was easy for them to export the raw materials or to export the final product to different areas where they could not go on bare foot right so railway lines were also made in order to help in this transportation of raw materials or the final goods so rail network was built by construction of trans indo china railways that joined north and south vietnam and china let's have a look at this map here again so here we see that this is the region of indo china this is your north vietnam that i am pointing out this is the map of vietnam laos and so on right cambodia this is the south vietnam what are we seeing here the rail network that started from this region and it also somehow connected to the region of 
South Vietnam and also China, extending to China. This is the region of China. Now, Pilan link was completed in 1910 with Yunnan in China. So, in China, there is this region that is Yunnan and the final link was completed in 1910 here. Another railway link was built between Vietnam and Siam. Now, Siam is the old name for Thailand. That was via Cambodian capital that is Phnom Phen. Now, here you see this is the Cambodian capital, right? Phnom Phen. And this is Cambodia. So, there was this another link that was connected to Cambodia and Vietnam. Okay? So, this is how they were connecting different regions. And right now, we were talking about the Mekong Delta. Look at this student. This is your Mekong River. And we all know that for cultivation, water is required in large quantity. So, therefore, this region was drained for cultivation purposes. Apart from this, for building the infrastructure, now for building the railway lines or railway links, they needed people. Now, who were those people who were helping them? So, the one here is the forced labor, right? So, that they were getting at cheap rates. The second is endangered Vietnamese labor. Now, here this is a new term for you that is endangered. So, endangered here it means unfree labor or forced labor. So, basically what happened in this? So, the endangered servant, he had to provide labor free of cost. Free of cost. He was not getting any pay for it and he had to work under his master according to his uh, way that he is saying. So, basically this is a bonded labor in which the person or the servant, he had to work according to his master and also he was not getting any pay. Now imagine the situations or situation of these Vietnamese labor who were forced to work there. Apart from this, the rubber plantations, they were improved by the forced endangered labor. So we see that the commercial crops, they were also grown or the plantations were also done in these regions to get maximum profit. And who were facilitating this? So, these were the forced endangered labor who were working in these plantations. And the conditions of these labor was quite bad. You can totally relate it with the colonial rule that happened in our country. So, the situation was same here. 